Because of the popularity of the ISSB topic on my channel, I've decided to make this video where we'll be comparing between the manual and the hydraulic ISSB machine. We look at two similarities and four differences between the two machines. This video can be useful to you if you're an upcoming ISSB contractor and you're deciding between which machine to go for. Also, if you're building your walls using interlocking stabilized soil blocks, it's good to know which machine can suit perfectly for your project. In addition, I've talked about each machine in previous videos and I've left the links to those videos in the description section below. With that, I'm Nick Mema and let's start by looking at the similarities of the manual and the hydraulic ISSB machine. The first similarity these two machines share is producing interlocking stabilized soil blocks or ISSBs in short. Another common term for these blocks is CSEBs or compressed soil earth blocks. Interlocking stabilized soil blocks are an alternative building material to the conventional stone blocks. They are produced by loading a mixture of soil and cement to either machine and compressed to make a block. The blocks are then left to cure with time and this helps them gain more strength to be used as walling blocks. Since they interlock, no mortar is applied between the joints. The second similarity is the ability to make ISSBs on site. Instead of having to transport stone blocks from a quarry to your site, these machines can produce the blocks on location. Once the machine is on your site, you can use the soil excavated from your foundation to make the ISSBs. The soil is sifted to remove any stones, boulders or debris and is mixed with cement according to a specified ratio. A typical ratio is one bag of cement to six wheelbarrows of soil. This ratio will vary with the soil of your area, your project's design and your budget. The only soil that isn't recommended is black cotton soil as it shrinks and swells too much in volume. If the soil in your area isn't suitable, you can import the soil from a quarry which is usually fine in nature. It's also cheaper to transport quarry soil than stone blocks to your site. Now, let's have a look at the differences. The first difference is how they're designed. The manual machine uses manpower for the compression process. The manual ISSB has a loading station in the middle where the soil and cement mix is added. Once the mixture is filled to the brim, the operator places a polythene paper at the top. This prevents the soil mix from sticking during compression. Using the lever arm that comes with the machine, he pushes it downward which compresses the soil. Afterwards, he lifts the top lid and using the same lever, he pushes the ISSB out of the machine. So that's how the manual ISSB machine works. The hydraulic ISSB machine, on the other hand, works differently. It is powered by a diesel engine or electricity. This model, for example, runs on a diesel engine. The only manpower that is needed is during the mixing and loading of the soil and cement mix to the machine. The diesel engine provides the hydraulic power needed to compress the soil into an ISSB. The hydraulic action also provides more compressive strength, making the blocks stronger than the ones made from the manual machine. The soil mix is loaded inside a hopper at the top. Once full, the soil mix is slid into the compression chamber. The operator then closes the top lid and lifts the bottom hydraulic cylinder. The top lid and the rising hydraulic cylinder provide the compression force needed to make an ISSB. Once full compression is achieved, he lifts the top lid and pushes the ISSB out of the compression chamber using the hydraulic cylinder. 
the block is then transported to an area where it will be left to cure. The second difference is productivity. Because the ISSB machine uses manpower, there's a limitation to how many blocks that can be produced per day. That's because of fatigue that workers face when compressing the soil. A typical production by four workers working an eight-hour shift can make 400 to 500 blocks per working day. Now, the contractor of this particular hydraulic machine says that on a highly productive day, the machine can output 3,000 ISSBs. That's because this particular model has two compression chambers, meaning double output of ISSBs at any given time. So you can see the massive difference in productivity between the two machines. The third difference is the types of blocks that can be produced. There are three types of ISSB blocks. The first block is the standard format block, which is 6 inches in width. The second block is the wide format block, which is 9 inches in width. And the third block is the curved format block. The hydraulic machine can make the standard and wide format blocks, while the manual machine requires separate machines. So to make the wide format block, you need the wide format manual machine. The same goes for the other two blocks. You will need the curved manual ISSB machine to make the curved blocks and the standard ISSB machine to make the standard format blocks. Curved ISSBs are used to make circular walls for homes, water tanks and even septic tanks. The fourth difference is pricing. We'll start with the manual machine. In Kenya, the companies that I visited which manufacture these machines are Makiga and Okole Building Technologies. The price of each manual ISSB machine, depending on the block it produces, is approximately $1,000. They occasionally offer discounts on their pricing. I've left links to their Facebook pages in the description below to get more information. As for the hydraulic machine, this model is manufactured by Hydraform, which is a South African company. It's called the M7 M2, and according to their website, the price is 292 thousand three hundred runs or about that much in US dollars. Also I've left a link to Hydraform in the description below. So those are the two similarities and the four differences between the manual and the hydraulic ISSB machine. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask me kindly leave them in the comments below. If you found this video useful consider leaving a like to help it reach more people. Thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.